we encourage all our citizens um, to share their thoughts and their ideas and their concerns with our school board. Um, and that's what the public forum component of a school board meeting is for. For people to come up and share their thoughts, their ideas, their concerns with the school board. The, the problem we've encountered is people have become disruptive. Um, we welcome anyone to come share their thoughts and ideas and concerns with us. We don't welcome people to come in and disrupt the board meeting. Um, that meeting is a, a meeting of the board of trustees that's conducted in public. Um, our school board doesn't have to allow an open forum public comment on anything other than agenda items, but our board, because they want to hear from the public, allow this open forum segment because they want to hear from our community. So we, we encourage that and we have always encouraged that. What we're asking is that you come and conduct yourself in a civil manner, that you come to the microphone, you say what you need to say, and then you turn it over to the next person. Um, there's a way to do that and not disrupt the meeting and communicate very clearly with the board. We also have uh, a leader's email that anyone can send any communication they like to the board of trustees and all the board members see it, uh, all the district leadership sees it. And so we're, we're always in touch with our community in some form or fashion. So we welcome community input. Just do it in a in a, a civil manner because we're, we're conducting a business meeting and it's the business of the district. And that's the board's job is to govern the district. That's what the meeting is for. Well, uh, one of the things we've started doing in, in recent years is we've put together a community legislative committee um, and it's about 90 to 100 people and they separate up into different subcommittees uh, that address different aspects of the district and what's going on in the legislature and through through input from other community members and those subcommittees we settled on what the district considered its legislative priorities things that we wanted to communicate to our legislature that that were important to Frisco ISD and the Frisco ISD community. So we've gotten a lot of input from community members. There are students that are on that committee. There are teachers. There are administrators. There are business representatives on that legislative committee that are parts of all those uh, part of all those subcommittees. Um, so it's it's been a really good process, and we feel like that our our legislative priorities now are a really good representation of Frisco ISD and the Frisco ISD community. Um, can you talk a little bit about what those priorities are? Sure. Um, virtual schooling uh, was a priority uh, last year, uh, just as an example. Um, and one of the things that, that we felt like, we and, and separate and apart from the virtual option we're talking about right now, we really wanted the state of Texas to allow public schools to offer virtual learning to the students in their district. Um, right now, the state doesn't fund that. And so it wasn't possible for us to offer that. And what we found out um, during the pandemic is there are students that really like that option. Now, it's not for everyone. Um, the vast majority of students want to come to school. That's the best setting for them. But there are some students and, and students' families that virtual learning is a really good option for them. And we wanted to be able to offer that to our students in, in Frisco ISD. We weren't interested in opening it up for other students outside our district. We just wanted to be able to serve the students and families in Frisco ISD. So that was one of the things we really advocated for uh, with our legislature. And you know, several of us went down and testified uh, on virtual learning. We, we communicated with representatives and senators and their staffs. Uh, we sent letters. We actually um, got a group of school districts uh, throughout the state. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many it was, but it was a number of school districts, large school districts, small school districts, that sent a letter to the governor and the legislators and the commissioner of education asking them to please pass legislation that would allow public schools to offer 
virtual learning and it, it, it got all the way through the process. It got out of, out of the Senate and it got out of the House. It was about to go to the governor and then of course some things happened down there and mm -hmm. it didn't make it. And so it's back on the special legislative session and what we're hoping is that the, the Senate and the House and the governor will eventually pass a piece of legislation that allows us to offer virtual learning.